Derek Chauvin, uh, who is the murderer of George Floyd, uh, how this is really showing the, the racism within our criminal justice system. And uh, first and foremost, like, we watched this guy murder this, this man. We watched Derek Chauvin murder George Floyd on camera. Uh, he ignored his pleas for help. He and then the and then him and the media made false allegations about George Floyd and allegations that virtually have nothing to do with the incident in question where uh, Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. You know, the media came out and said, oh, well, this guy has a criminal history. Again, what does that have to do with uh, with the call that Chauvin got for a counterfeit twenty dollar bill? Does a counterfeit $20 bill equal let's stand on this man's neck for eight minutes, 46 seconds? Is that is that justice? The answer is no. Uh, but then the media was like, well, this guy's done drugs. This guy's, oh, look how big he is. Look how this he is. Look how that he is. And they came out with a list of kind of typical smear jobs that they do in cases like this, right? They do it for every single person. Uh, they, they did it for Eric Garner. They did it for Mike Brown, uh, Antoine Rose. That That's just what they do. That's their job. Their job is to, to, to essentially prop up the, the police who are just, uh, who, who do protect and serve, but they protect and serve the interests of the rich. They don't protect and serve the interests of the public. They don't protect and serve the interests of the people. They protect and serve the interests of the rich. That's exactly what they do. Um, and uh, uh, that's exactly how they operate. Historically speaking, a lot of uh, uh, police departments, uh, well, historically speaking, the police itself came from slave patrols. And then they became uh, armed enforcers for corporations. And when the cops couldn't be uh, armed enforcers for corporations, they hired mercenaries to go and beat the shit out of strikers and socialists in the early 1900s and so on and so on and so on. And now you, you've arrived at this massive racist criminal justice system uh that uh, that goes after uh black people and you can see it now that now that all of a sudden we're seeing more uh mass shootings in the country again uh which mass shootings never went away it's just we don't call police shootings when police kill innocent black and brown people mass shootings we don't we don't really call it that uh but we really should that's part of the problem um but now that we're seeing like what happened in colorado what happened in uh, Atlanta, right? Oh, oh, you know, yes, this guy went to, what is it, six different uh, Asian-owned uh, massage parlors, and uh, we're not going to say he's racist. And, you know, he just has a, a, a weird thing about sex. He's a, pur he's a purity person, blah, 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 blah. Excuse, excuse, excuse. When it's like, yeah, it, okay, you, you, you can be somebody that uh, wants, you know, some kind of purity but that doesn't mean that you go and kill a group of people and also it was specifically targeted you know like he specifically targeted asian americans which kind of makes it racist so the media runs interference they run excuses they demonize black people but these killers these these white people that do end up killing people get the the treatment of well they're sick they're mentally ill they're this they're that whereas black people are seen as oh he used to be a criminal seven years ago he ran a red light does that mean that his life gets taken away what kind of justification are you making right so those arguments were all seen over the course of the last year though we we heard all of these arguments uh, because pe people on on the left, people on the true left, people in the Black Lives Matter movement, the defund the police movement, that were championing these protests, um, were all like pushing back against these bullshit stories. What they failed to mention is Derek Chauvin's record and how the Democrats that were in charge of the criminal justice system in Minnesota ignored all this shit and you can bet your ass that this happened in plenty of other states as well 
So in 2005, Derek Chauvin plowed into a car, killing three young men. Plowed in the car, killing three young men. 2006, he shot an Ojibwe man, Ojibwe being one of the uh, indigenous tribes that are in uh, uh, Minnesota there, right? Uh, he shot an Ojibwe man 23 times. In what universe is shooting somebody 23 times rationalized ever? Uh, none. The answer to that is none. There is no universe where they'd go, well, he had to unload 23 rounds. Because why? Because he's an Ojibwe man and, and you have racist thoughts in your head that oh man the ojibwe are con you know connected to nature the natives are connected to nature what if they used a tree to kill everybody what you're crazy you're out of your gourd <laughs> and then in 2008 he shot a man uh in a domestic violence case so he has a he has a a, a, a history of violent tendencies uh no prosecution for any of this stuff, right? They kind of just swept it under the rug. They ignored the fact that he did this stuff. So what does that mean? That means that Derek Chauvin is going to think, well, I can do whatever the fuck I want because I am Steven Seagal's above the law. Nobody should try to fucking... <laughs> Nobody should try to be like Steven Seagal. That's not something you should aspire to. But these cops do, right? These killer cops are, are like, I'm Steven Seagal above the law. Uh, and and their politicians said, let that shit go, right? Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar didn't investigate any of this stuff. Completely let Derek Chauvin go. He's committed various acts of violence that have led to the death of people. He murdered at least four people before George Floyd. At minimum, four people before George Floyd. How do they handle it? They send him on paid leave. So he's no longer in the com in these communities. He's no longer a presence. And you can go, oh, well, we got, you know, we sent him to a thing. He's away from the community. Don't worry. He's away. He's got, he'll be back in two weeks. But, you know, for now, let's just, you know, oh, look, a, a cat stuck in a tree. Isn't it? Look, look at these muffins shaped like, I don't know, Jesus. We got Jesus muffins here. We got to do a story about that. Let's ignore the violent police officer that's still in the community. The the earliest one they're looking at is 2005. Those 50, he has a 15 year track record, at minimum 15 year track record of violent behavior that has ended the life of at least four people before George Floyd. This could have been prevented if Amy Klobuchar. Uh, had what wasn't wasn't a spineless democratic toady that did the same shit that Kamala Harris did, which is ignore evidence that would let people go or ignore violent police officers in your communities that you said that you were going to defend and let people. Amy Klobuchar is known for uh, uh, having a fucking kid imprisoned for 20 years with no evidence that he did it just because she wanted this taken care of. She didn't want it on her plate anymore. So these are the people that are defending this. These are the people that are, that are pro Derek Chauvin, by the way, because Amy Klobuchar is, is just as much to blame for the death of George Floyd as Derek Chauvin is because Derek Chauvin was a known violent police officer and Amy Klobuchar did fucking nothing about it. So she's just as responsible for this. Now, Minneapolis's uh, police budget was decreased by $8 million. $8 million, okay, is what it said. That's still uh, $179 million. That's how much they have in their budget. $179 million. Why is it that high? Why is it that astronomical? I would say you could have $179, $179 million police budget if you also have at least $170 million social services program. 
to uplift communities of color, low income neighborhoods, to make sure that uh, people that, you know, they work two jobs have the ability to take care of their kids when they come home from school. So their kids don't get involved in any sort of illicit activities, maybe, uh, you know, some sort of a community center, some sort of a mental health program, after school programs. Why are those only available for rich kids? Why aren't they available for low income neighborhoods and communities of color? It's because they don't give a shit about the communities of color. And because they don't, they, and, and then they come up with the idea of where's the money going to come from? Well, where the fuck is the money coming from for $179 million for the police budget? Seems like we could start there. Seems like $179 million still leads to a bunch of people getting murdered by a police officer. And those cases not going anywhere. Cops go free, get to kill somebody else. Wasn't that the whole point of the criminal justice system to begin with? Joe Biden on the fucking Senate floor saying shit like we need to get these people off the streets. I don't care. That's what I, I, I watched this speech. Um, uh, I don't care about uh, why they did it. I only care that they're off the street because it could be your mom or your dad or your daughter or your brother or your cousin. He put he put that fear mongering bullshit in order to get his 94 crime bill passed. OK, if it's if it's really getting the dangerous people off the streets, you know, the people that smoke marijuana. And end up watching some cartoons or not killing anybody after they smoke marijuana. Since you're claiming those people are so dangerous, wouldn't the people that actually fucking murder people be even more dangerous than the pot smoker that's fucking playing video games after a hard day of work or a hard day of school. The pot smoker that needs to do it to help get over some trauma, some anxiety, some depression. The pot smoker that has epilepsy or gets seizures and now it's in control. If we're saying those people are dangerous, wouldn't Derek Chauvin be like basically on the level of a serial killer, which he kind of is because he systematically kills people. That's just what he does. He's, he's, he's a fucking sociopath. Where's Joe Biden coming out and saying, we need to put these killers. I don't care why these killer cops do what they do. I just want them off the streets. It's because Joe Biden is a racist old man that doesn't give a shit about black people. Unless he needs your votes. Unless he needs, and, and if you don't vote for him, then clearly you're not black because blackness is defined by the Biden. Don't ever, nobody should ever forget that. Also, black people, not as diverse as Latino people. You should also not forget that that's a Bidenism. So over the summer, we saw all these protests, right? The Black Lives Matter movement, the Defund the Police movement. There's a lot of pushback from the Republicans. There's a lot of pushback from the Democrats. And again, the Democrats played that dick measuring contest of who's tougher on crime, the Democrats or the Republicans. And the answer is, who gives a shit? Why aren't you looking at the root cause of the problem? And creating a system, uh, creating a world where people don't have to commit crimes all the time. Why are you making things legal like homelessness, a plant? Why are those things legal? Why aren't you asking that question? Eventually, the movement died down, right? Um, we saw protests going all through uh, into the fall, and then the wintertime, it kind of tapered down. We were starting to see some reforms. We were starting to see city councils um, and, and certain mayors that were kind of listening to what the movement was saying. And then it got co-opted by the Democratic Party in order to get Joe Biden elected. Right, they were kind of using the movement as a as a um, a voting device uh, to to get people to vote for Trump or Biden, rather. Sorry, uh, Freudian slip. Uh, <coughs> but they co opted the movement, and this sort of this sort of shit happens all the time, right? Uh, and again, I want to point this out is Joe Biden created the conditions for killer cops like Derek Chauvin to get away with murder time and time and time and time again. 
So the Democratic Party co-opting a movement that's about real criminal justice, about getting rid of racism from the criminal justice system, essentially put the man that created the racism in the criminal justice system in power, in, in the ultimate position of power. So again, kind of tells you where the Democrats are on this issue. They don't really care about it unless it comes time to take your votes. If they need your votes, they'll side with you and then they will abandon it. I have yet to hear Joe Biden denounce this motherfucker. I have yet to hear Joe Biden come out and say that the uh, the sentencing for the police officers that murdered Breonna, uh, Breonna Taylor was wrong. That the, the cop that killed Tamir Rice a 12-year-old boy with an orange fake gun was wrong because he doesn't see it as wrong. He sees it as cops doing their job. Oh, what he should have done is shoot these people in the leg. If there, if, if, if the cop that shot Tamir Rice would have just maimed the child instead, it would have been fine, according to Joe Biden, because that child is still dangerous because he's black and he could grow up and maybe he could become a rap artist. Or maybe he could become the next corn pop. So, Shoman got to await his trial at home. He didn't get to, he wasn't in, in jail, right? Which is not a luxury that uh, black and brown people get. They don't really get that kind of luxury. Uh, his lawyers wanted to decrease the charges even further. And uh, I, I thought we, he should get first degree murder because I, I think after about 30 seconds of sitting on somebody's neck, at that point, you know that your weight is eventually going to kill this person or at least do enough brain, like at least deplete the oxygen so much that you might do some brain damage. George Floyd was not resisting arrest. He wasn't trying to attack the officers. Derek Chauvin just saw a large black man, was uncomfortable by him. There's also um, there's also a couple things where uh, George Floyd and, and Chauvin might have worked together on a night security job at a nightclub. Uh, and the, I think the owner said like he had expressed some uh, some some concerns with some of the staff that he worked with. The staff being primarily black. Now, the difficulty in getting first-degree murder, the charge of first-degree murder, is, so you have to prove intent, right? Like, this was a plan. Again, but it's like you're sitting on somebody's neck for eight minutes, 46 seconds. After that first 30 seconds, it's like you know what you're doing. You know what your intent is. You're, like, it's not, it's not like it's a surprise to be like, oh, man, I cut off the oxygen supply to some human being who run on oxygen and boy, howdy, they died. I had no, I wish somebody would have told me about this. If you, you can, you can only do first degree for a cop if they can prove that this is a pattern, right? There are other convictions of him doing shit like this, which there are. He has murdered other people before and gotten away with it because there was no case brought up to it. Thanks to Amy Klobuchar. Because when she was the DA, she just let this shit go. So, you know, if, if I mean, Derek Chauvin is one. How many other cops were there and how many other counties that were getting away with murder? How many cops out there right now in, in Minneapolis that are getting away with murder? Because Amy Klobuchar turned a blind eye. Because she was she was more concerned about her record being spotless and prestigious. Because she was more concerned about getting donations from the fucking police unions. By the way, if you kill a cop, it's automatically first degree murder. But killer cops get to go free and kill again to commit more first degree murders. They're also saying, well, you know, we should give him a lesser sentence because, well, the city settled with the Floyd family for twenty seven million dollars, which is similar to because um, they, they claimed it was wrongful death. And it's similar to uh what happened with Fred Hampton because Fred Hampton's family got a large settlement from the city of Chicago after the, um, 
after the uh, 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 Chicago Police Department raided his home illegally uh, and killed everybody or most everybody. They left a couple people alive and then they put two bullets in the back of Fred Hampton's head when he was bleeding out on the ground. And they were like, well, here's some money. I'm sure that'll that'll fill the, the loss of a child or a brother or an uncle or a father. That'll do it. No, we don't need to bring this police department to justice. We, we're just going to let them be out there and, and terrorize the community even more. No big deal. No problem. Don't worry about it. I want to I want to show you guys a, a a couple things about how um racism is used within the within the uh the trial itself cuz this is from left voice let me find the tab here apologies for being a little unprepared oh man where the hell is it <laughs> I just lost the whole tab. I have the tab pulled up, but I can't find it in the share. Apologize for that. Give me one moment. I will find it. Ah, there it is. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, here, we'll read this part. It says, the president does not bode well. For the possibility of Chauvin's conviction, the cops almost always get away with murder. Think of Breonna Taylor, who was brutally murdered in her own home. The only legal consequences in that case fell upon a cop whose bullets missed the target. Think of 12-year-old Tamir Rice, who was shot uh, after just two seconds on the scene for holding an orange-tipped toy gun. His murder's excuse was an objectively reasonable response. Uh, by former law enforcement official tasked with investigating it. Killer cops walk away free after high-profile murders of Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, Tony McDade, and Philando Castile. These names are familiar, but the list of black people slaughtered by the police each year is much longer. Most of the names never even rose to the lips of protesters, and nearly all of their killers are still on the job. Racism and pro-cop propaganda, or copaganda as, as, as it's known in the circles, uh, runs so deep that even the clearest evidence usually isn't enough to charge and convict. Thanks to the, quote, reform of equi equipping police with body cams, we now have multiple instances of murder captured on camera in broad daylight. Tulsa PD uh, Betty Shelby was acquitted after shooting Terrence Krushner to death, captured vividly on video by police he uh, helicopter. She's still on patrol. Eric Garner's death was Likewise, captured on a video in broad daylight, but this wasn't enough to even bring charges against NYPD officer Daniel Pantaleo. Even when legal action is taken, the victims and their loved ones often receive closer scrutiny than the killer cops on trial. Trayvon Martin's friend Rachel uh, Gentile was cruelly and publicly discredited and branded as, quote, inarticulate based on racist standards. Off-duty officer George Zimmerman, meanwhile, was acquitted of Martin's murder. In the case of Laquan McDonald, the defense literally said, think about a monster movie and went to call McDonald the black teenager who was shot 16 times a monster. Ferguson PD officer Darren Wilson, who murdered Mike Brown, invoked racist stereotype about black men describing Brown as a demon and, quote, crazed. Wilson was also acquitted. Tamir Rice's mother was accused by the Cuyahoga County prosecutor of having economic motives for pursuing justice for her son. These are the ways that the criminal justice system has decided to paint the victims of police brutality. So we see the media kind of using their criminal background, right? Oh, they had a parking ticket. Oh, you know, they they were in a gang for a little while. Oh, they went to prison for this. They, they might have done this, right? Uh, he he doesn't watch. He doesn't sing the happy birthday song when he washes his hands. He's he he's thinking Nelly. I heard him in the bathroom, and he doesn't sing happy birthday, but he is singing Nelly, who we all know is a violent rap artist. 
He's he washes his hand with violence in his heart. That's the way that the media portrays it. And then we take all of that, right, which is what average Americans watch. Average Americans don't watch. Uh, they should. They really should watch things like Jimmy Dore and Lee Camp, Richard Methurst, Action for Assange, right? They should read things like Left Voice, right? They should read things like Consortium News, but they don't. They watch cable news. They watch corporate media, and they think that this is journalism when it's really not. So then you have a bunch of liberals, right? These rich white liberals, mostly white liberals, that see all this coverage. And they go, oh, well, you know, and then they spout this shit out. Oh, well, there, he could have had something in his system. What could he have had in his system? The tox report came out clean. Tox report had, said that he had some prescription medication, heart, or some, some heart pills in his system. What do you got? You got nothing, right? And then and then you go to the trial where they start using words like monster, inarticulate, craves, demon, and uh, pursuit of economic motives. First of all, you murdered somebody's child. You murdered somebody's child. The amount of grief that they probably go through, the amount of time that they would need from work. You don't think a community can come together, help them out a little bit? Provide them with food, help them out with rent, help them out with some bills. Fucking kid just died. You know, you know what system doesn't give a shit when that happens? Capitalism. Because when you lose somebody that close to you, you don't get paid leave for grief. You don't get an a a a, a pardon or your bills canceled or your debts canceled for a little while. None of that shit, because we don't take grief seriously in this country. I literally had uh, someone, when I lost my best friend, someone said, it's been two weeks, get over it. That's not how grief works. You don't, you don't, it's not on a fucking timeline, and it sure shit ain't on the timeline of capitalism. economic motives what a bunch of bullshit no, no no motherfucker your system is on an economic motive your system disproportionately puts black people in prison for economic motives and you have the balls to call the mother of someone that lost their child to an incompetent police officer incompetent racist police officer to have economic motives you have the balls to say that this is about, uh, 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 he was crazed, he was a monster. This is the sort of shit that happens within our criminal justice system. I want to read this next part. Let me find it real quick. Um. Uh, because I want to show you guys how uh, the jury selection system itself is um, is also base. It's also racist, right? And they do a really good job of kind of breaking this this down. And here's the thing: like years ago, maybe three or four years ago, I remember um, there's a show called uh, Imperfect, I think, something like that. It's a it's a NPR show where they talk about uh, Supreme Court cases. And one of them talked about jury selection and how racist it was and how often that when there was a uh, a black person on trial, they would try to have an all white jury and they would make the claim that, oh, if if this is a if this is a case related to a black person, we can't have a black person on 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 the uh, on the jury because, well, they'll have implicit bias and they'll and they'll have sympathies towards this person. So they won't they won't be objective about it, which is all bullshit, right? Because we don't we don't say that whenever there's a white person on trial, right? The the fucking kid that that killed uh, all those Asian people in Atlanta, when he goes to trial, are they going to say, well, we can't have white people on on the jury because white people will be more sympathetic towards him? Oh, we also can't have Second Amendment people because they'll be more sympathetic towards him. We can't have white supremacists on there because they'll be more sympathetic towards him. They don't do that kind of shit. All of a sudden. Jury polls are more inclusive when it's a white 
person on trial. But all of a sudden, when there's a black person on trial, they were like, oh, it, this is going to be oh racial bias, racial bias, right? So let me let me pull this up here. Drew's lecture is portrayed as a neutral way to guarantee the democratic trial by one's peers, but in reality, the infrastructure, it, the the, it's a structural feature of the racist system, which ensures cops can get away with murder. Most juries aren't representative of the cities, much less the neighborhood where police violence took place. For example, in Chicago, a city which is less than fifty percent white, uh, only one black juror served in the trial of Laquan McDonald, the juror of color uh, that the defense did not try to dismiss was a Hispanic woman who was trying to join the Chicago police department. To this day, it is not illegal to have an all white jury. So there you go. Criminal justice system says it's cool to have an all white jury. Can't have an all black jury though. So here's some more stuff, right? Further, the selection process itself is biased. Members of the jury are selected based on DMV and voter registration polls. Black people of color are far more likely to own a car and less likely to be a registered voter, which narrows down the pool of people of color that can be selected. In other words, from the get-go, people of color, especially those who are low income and underrepresented uh, in uh, underrepresented in those called in those are called to be jurors. So basically, pointing out how i mean this is done by voter registration and dmvs right and there, there's a lot of people in low-income neighborhoods that just don't have cars and there's a lot of black people that aren't registered to vote you want to know when it went in san francisco in oakland when bobby seal from the black panthers ran to be the mayor of oakland that's when you saw an uptick in black voter registration because they actually had a fucking uh they actually had a fucking person they wanted to vote for instead of some somebody they were told to vote against which is not a good reason to cast a vote uh so and again it's like why would somebody want to register to vote in a system that is corrupt that is broken that lacks integrity that constantly tells you that if you don't vote oh the voting is the way that you have to do it but then throws two hundred thousand people off the voter rolls because they moved or that tries to gerrymander certain things so that they win more elections. Why would they do that? Now, I want to read this next part because it's about the questions they ask in the jury selection. Um, and then we'll 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 get to the 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 wrap up portion of this. Um, so this says uh, juries are are not just narrowly narrowed demographically. They're also filtered by political opinion. Once summoned, the candidates go through the voir dire process. I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, in which they can be asked questions like, "Have you had a bad experience with the police department?" This could be a reason to uh, to be struck from the jury, creating an obscenely pro police and racist bias, excluding every single person. Who has had a bad experience with a cop means striking the majority of black people, especially black men, from the jury. After all, seven to ten black Americans say that they experience police harassment. In a nation of systemic police violence, these kinds of questions define, quote, unbiased as white, wealthy, and pro-police. So that's who they're trying to that's who they're trying to uh target, right? And and they make it sound like, oh, well, we're trying to eliminate bias. Well, okay, are you asking people the question of uh well how do you feel about black people do you feel like you have a racial bias towards black people have you or any members of your family ever been part of the kkk are you asking those questions no it doesn't seem like they're asking any sort of racial bias questions that might show that you have racial hatred there should be like psychologists involved in this process to 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 kind of make it a little bit more unbiased, right? They should be asking people better questions that that can show their bias in a less direct way 
And so I think there should be a fucking psychologist in charge of this. So uh, for the for the show of in trial, jury candidates were asked to fill out questionnaires that included questions like, how favorable are you towards BLM? And how favorable are you to Blue Lives Matter? This is a grossly false equivalency. Black Lives Matter is a movement in response to police killings of black people, while Blue Lives Matter is an un attempt to justify police murder. Blue Lives Matter is an explicitly racist slogan, while Black Lives Matter is the very basic assertion that black people should matter. Yet again, supposedly unbiased questions are structurally stanted towards pro-police acquisitions. This is the last part about uh, uh, pre preemptory strike, which which is something that lets people remove jurors, right? So uh, this is all in addition to the use of preemptory strike, which gives attorneys the right to strike down the participation of any potential juror with no explanation or justification. A strike based on race is not technically permissible here, but attorneys can use virtually any other reason from attending a BLM protest to listening to hip hop to having a beard. Across the country, per, uh, pre per, peremptory strikes, peremptory, sorry, that's my fault there. Uh, are used to exclude peoples of color from juries uh, in cases that on the surface do not involve racial bias. So again, lots of different ways that they show racial bias within within the, the jury selection, within the questions that they ask, within the statements that these attorneys make that are all meant to demonize black people in this country. And then on the on the higher levels, right in the DA, the Senate, the the, the senatorial uh, level, congressional level, we have people excusing this sort of behavior, overlooking killer cops. We have DAs like in Louisville that that make excuses for letting killer cops go when the entire community has said that they want to see these people in prison that this was definitely murder. All of the evidence points to it. All of the evidence points to the fact that Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd. And the way that the criminal justice system operates, this is not going to be a jury of anybody's peers except Derek Chauvin's. It's going to be completely only Derek Chauvin's peers, people that look at Derek Chauvin as a hero. Not somebody objective. And I bet you, in this case, they will not bring up Derek Chauvin's past records. Why? Because there was never a case filed against him. He got paid leave twice. And this is why our criminal justice system is broken. This is why people don't trust cops. This is why people don't trust the law. This is why people don't trust most Congress people because most Congress people used to be lawyers, attorneys, defense attorneys, district attorneys. And they know how to bend it to be favorable to themselves and to their donors and to the people that protect their money. And the people that protect their stuff, which is what cops are. All right, I know this is a super long segment, and you guys have a lot of comments, and I don't want to ignore them. <laughs> uh, smear the dead. That's what the media does. Yeah, they smear the dead. Um, said the Atlanta Atlanta shooter was having a bad day, but you notice how nobody else is ever having a bad day if they're black. If they're black, they're never having a bad day. They're just having a criminal day. Because that's how the media paints them, they, and that's how the criminal justice system paints them to be criminals. If you're if you're mel if you, if you have too much melatonin in your skin and it's unapproved by by the, the 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 law enforcement shade meter, then you're not having a bad day. Uh, was the twenty dollar definitely counterfeit? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there were a lot of uh, back and forth about it. I think I think. Mint Press News, because they, because they're uh, based in Minneapolis, went and talked to the shop owner, who called it in, who called the counterfeit bill in, 
Um, and he and he made a statement saying that he thought it was counterfeit. So um, I'm 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 honestly not sure, regardless of whether it it was or wasn't didn't warrant a man's death. Uh, Amy Klobuchar had the nerve to to show at George Floyd's memorial. Yeah, which is like you're the reason why this is all happening. You could have you could have stopped it. You know, if we do like an end game for uh like an Avengers end game type scenario where we time travel to go fix, fix the past, like go and talk to Amy Klobuchar to fucking put this guy on trial in 2005. Uh, paid leave, real punishment or transfer to where they do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, settlements in the city budget should be out of police officers pockets. Well, they should fire these cops and whatever their salary is should go into the budgets for social programs, for mental health relief, for after school programs for kids. You know, uh Oh, some more Biden quotes. Uh Holly's got so Holly's got a good good list of Biden quotes. Uh I don't want my kids growing up in a in a jungle. Yeah, a racialized jungle, I believe is what he called it. And this is the guy that's going to bring um balance to the force right <laughs> anthony good to see you uh thank you for tuning in democrats sold the future of the party for four years without trump they did yeah well uh, you know i a lot there's a lot of talk around the fact that biden's not going to last till the end of this year maybe not even till you know definitely not till the end of next year they'll 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 oust him and put Kamala in charge. And that's really what all this was about, was putting a woman of color in charge, because the only thing that the Democratic Party really has is identity politics. And they can hang their hat on that. But behind the hat is where, you know, um, all of their machinations are going on. This is this is where the pro-war is, the pro-banks, the pro-corporate interests of the party all lie. They kind of use the veil of identity politics to get away with that. You know, last week we talked a lot about the aggression towards China. And then all of a sudden we sit there and you see a lot of liberals talking about, oh, stop the Asian hate. But we're actively pursuing military conflict with China. What do you think that's going to do? 9-11, may, when we actively, excuse me, pursued military conflict with the Middle East, everybody that was vaguely brown was called a terrorist. You have no idea how many times I was called a terrorist between the ages of 14 and what day is it now? No idea how many times. Because specifically of what happened with the war on Iraq. So if if the military aggression doesn't stop, then of course Asian Americans are going to be persecuted against because that's how that's how pro military propaganda works. So they sold their own party. The party's dead. The party doesn't exist. Philando Castillo, uh, Holly says Philando Castillo was permitted uh, to uh, conceal and carry he told the cop he was getting ready to show him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's in the video, too. And the cop just freaks out and uh, and then blam, blam, blam. Elijah McClain uh, told the officer, I'm an introvert. I'm different. But they don't know any of that stuff because they don't get training in any of that stuff. They don't get training in dealing with mental health services at all. So if if really the cops are meant there to de-escalate the situation, as we're told that they are, which is all bullshit, uh, then they would have listened to Elijah McClain. And they would have said, OK, hang tight. We're going to sit here with you, not handcuffed. We're going to sit here with you and we're going to call a counselor to have a conversation with you. It's cool. But they didn't do that. They pumped him full of fucking chemicals and, and he ended up brain dead. And they did that. The cops did that. You you don't get over it. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't get over the death of a, of, of a family member. You just don't. To, to, so to say that to somebody is just awful. That's what the judge said about. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to look over to Rockfin. Uh, good to see you guys over on Rockfin. Melanin, not melatonin. Did I say melatonin, Sarah? I'm so sorry. Sarah Sarah just connect, corrected me. If you have too much melanin. I can't believe I said melatonin. Oh, man. Good catch, Sarah. Good catch. I, I Clearly, I need more coffee. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fred says they don't bend the law. They twist the laws. Yeah. Uh, uh, to their own to their own favor. 
you know, they, they do it to benefit themselves. Uh, Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.